right. Good day to you all. Uh, today is October 29th in the year of our Lord, 2021. And I'm Jay Delancey, alias Vote Checker. And I want to thank you for watching this video. And I hope you'll gain something from it. I uh, want to start, since today is the 29th, we're going to start with Proverbs 29. And honestly, it's really hard to pick one proverb and go, this is the one. So I want to, I'm going to take two today and just take a quick riff on them. First Proverbs 29, 25 says, The fear of man brings a snare, but he that trusts the Lord shall be exalted or shall be praised. So uh, remember who to fear. And it's not man. It's not, uh, it's not the Nazis you see around you or even the communists you see around you. Uh, no, it is not. Uh, quick plug to a book that you Facebook people will have to see in reverse, but I made reference to it um, in a recent podcast. It's by Cheryl Atkinson. It's called The Smear. And there's somebody who has every right to be afraid and she's fearless. We should be too. We should not let the, the, um, the whims of uh, man uh, cause us to uh, the, the, the the fear mongering of people uh, should not be what primarily drives us. And that's, uh, but that's not the proper one to go to today. It's, it's more personal. Um, King James, it, so it's a little King Jamesian, if you will, Old English, says, Scornful men bring a city into snare, but wise men turn away wrath. Uh, okay, take out the sexism, the men. Uh, I know some people are triggered by that. Some of y'all are, oh, it can't be men. Men are, men are ick. Uh, hey, I'm a man. Wait. Um, so, uh, you know, the scoreful mind brings the city into a snare, but the wise person turns away wrath. It is so important that we don't let our emotions uh, cause us to, to do things we're going to regret. And God is really dealing with me on that area. Don't get emotional because when we get emotional, we lose our rational ability. And then we, then we become just like them. Then we become, oh, it's, it's not who we are, right? Uh, we become, we do emotional things that are bad. And so I would encourage you to don't lose your head. Don't get hot headed as you see these things happening and let your words be measured. Yeah. Just uh, trust God in this. And kind of puts it all into perspective. All right, what I want to do is uh, I'm going to go to my screen share for uh, people who are watching the video, and I'll start the, the talk. First off, I mentioned the other day um, that I needed you to be prepared to deploy to the legislature because we were going to have a quick no-notice battle over House Bill 259, 259, a bill I will talk about today. Uh, I did mention that to you, and sure enough, last night I was notified that the Rules Committee in the House is meeting at 2 p.m., and then just like, and just like that, it was canceled. Instead, the House Redistricting Committee is meeting at 2 p.m. Now, this is on Monday, by the way, not today, because we're, we're out of town today, but on Monday, these committees are meeting. I think rules will, might reemerge somewhere, and we might know it's Sunday night. Or not, maybe they're going to go full in to work in the redistricting issue and just as they should. I mean, 259 is a great bill. I'm going to talk about it, but it's really um, redistricting is kind of the 800 pound gorilla sitting over there in the corner. They have to deal with it because, I mean, this is a grand opportunity. And unlike some states where they're going to give away the Republican majority and make it harder for Republicans ever to win again. In the, in the Congress, to win a majority in Congress, North Carolina is holding their ground. And I've been very critical of those of you who follow me any length of time at all know that I have been no fan of our House leadership um, and House Senate leadership. But I commend them for having the courage of their convictions to fight this. this uh, it's hilarious because redistricting it's uh, the left can't have it both ways, but they want it both ways. What they want to do is say, if you don't give us a Democrat majority, you're a racist. That's what they want to say. Uh, if you look at the racial data, then you're a racist. If you don't look at the racial data, then you're a racist. 
They want it every which way they can. They generally get it through the courts, but those days are coming to an end. And I think they're not going to get away with it. The feds have kind of started backing out of it, realizing they were played. Um, I'm being as charitable as I can be with John Roberts, but um, that's what happened. Basically, the feds are out of the redistricting business. They said, nope, it's a state matter. It's really a legislative matter. It's not in the courts. And what I wish our legislature would do is tell the courts to pound sand. There, this right. Yeah, you, you get the idea. Tell the courts just to just to beat it. That we're not going to pay attention to you on that because you have no authority in this area. We do. Now, I don't think I don't know if they're going to do that, but they are writing maps. They're going to give. Um, they're going to take back some of those seats they gave away a couple of years ago, after judicial pressure was applied to them. And it looks like, from what I can tell, they're going to take some of those back, just the early news accounts. So if you're going to be downtown anyway, uh, or want to be downtown, it'll be some high dramedy, comedy drama, uh, at the redistricting committee meeting at uh, hmm, like 9 a.m. They're doing redistricting and elections uh, in the Senate, and the House side is doing it at 2 p.m. For redistricting so i think it's game on they're going to release the maps and be done with it so uh, it's going to be an interesting day if you want to do it so but there won't be the rules committee over 259 and i told people be ready you may deploy the chances of you deploying monday for the rules for the 259 for house bill 259 are slim and none at this point i'd say barely all right moving on the uh, we we had a, uh, a post on our website, uh, we've had a couple of them, and I want to revisit one of them in particular. Uh, there's a lot of panic going on at the Board of Elections, and uh, some of it's caused by you. So thank you for what you have done. Some of it is also caused by people like Joel Altman, Draza Smith, and I'll talk about Joel and Draza here very soon. Um, let's see. No, I'll talk about them right now. That's the plan. They are, uh, it's on our website. If you go to voterintegrityproject.com and scroll down, you'll see a picture of a lovely looking lady and a handsome young man with a beard. Well, he's got hair. He's, he's almost handsome, but he's got a lot of hair up here. So, you know, his, his head's not perfect. So God covered up his, his head with some hair. But I don't know, from the looks of it, I think he's headed in the right direction. You know what I mean? Pretty soon he'll be dazzlingly handsome. Uh, the, these are two audit force events this weekend. And unfortunately, the one in Raleigh is, or fortunately for the organizers, the one in Raleigh is sold out. Joe Altman and Draza Smith, or Lady Draza is her, her moniker on uh, Telegram. Very, very intelligent. And she's an NC State uh, electrical engineering graduate. So you know she's smart, right? She does math. Though, so I need to warn you uh, if you're a Carolina kid. I'm sorry, I know that's a four-letter word, but she does math, and she's uh, she's also just very learned. You go to the website and see more about it. Uh, let's see. What she did was looked at the data uh, from the perspective of the election night returns used by media outlets like New York Times, Fox, and CNN to forecast election results, and she uses math to do that. Math. And she's going to explain that tonight. I, I know it's like, really on a Friday night in Raleigh or Saturday in on the Crystal Coast over in Morehead City. If you're out that way, uh, you might want to check it out. Come to our website, get a link to the ticket site, and you can buy a ticket. We're not profiting at all from the event. I'm just serving as a, a media pass through on this because I really appreciate the group that is doing this. It's called uh, North Carolina Audit Force. Uh, uh, yeah, they're a good group, and they're doing the, uh, the hard work of canvassing, and that's very hard work. So I, I, I got their back. I want them to succeed. And this is an event they're doing, and hopefully it'll draw people in who will go, all right, I'm going to go join you in canvassing. That's what we need. Will it happen that way? I don't know. I hope so. Okay, Draza, uh, Lady Draza will be there, as will uh, Joel. And Joel, uh, par uh, Joe, rather, uh, apparently, Joe's claim to fame is uh, he's the one who outed uh, a guy named Eric Coomer, one of the data wizards uh, who works within, or, or I don't know, programmer or something, who works with Dominion Systems and publicly stated 
that uh, Trump would win. Let's see. Uh, there's a quote he had in here, and I had it on the post. Okay, the person who designed the algorithms used to control the winners of all elections in the United States is who Coomer is. That's who Joel alleges him to be. And Altman, uh, Kuman, I mean, Altman reached that conclusion about Coomer because he infiltrated a Zoom call where Coomer said, uh, I'm going to make effing sure that Trump does not win. And that's, uh, hold on, I have a technical problem here. Bear with me. Yeah, he's, I could talk to y'all on Facebook, but I have to uh, tell my people on the other they were getting a lot of noise on the mic and it's because it was under my shirt and I couldn't do that. Anyway, uh, so he was, Coomer was the guy, you've probably seen his video where he he was a Dominion employee saying he was going to make effing, only he spelled it out, he said it, I'm going to make effing sure Trump did not win. And that was, that's who this guy is. And he works for Dominion Systems and apparently he has the ability to do that. Uh, getting a weird look here. Uh, Gosh, the things you learn about that lighting. Anyway, um, these people are speaking. They're they're doing a Raleigh event that's sold out. So if you're not already going to it, well, well, forget it. Uh, but they're also doing an event at the um, Crystal Coast Civic Center, I believe is what they call it. The Crystal Palace, the Crystal Coast Civic Center in Moorhead City. So it's way out there on the east. Hey, if you want to go to the beach this weekend, why not? Say, honey, let's go to the beach. Let's go to Moorhead. Let's go to the <clears throat> let's go to the Crystal Coast, and then buy tickets to this event. Check it out. I'm told that the one in Moorhead is not sold out, but the one in Raleigh is. So, never mind. If you're going to do it in Raleigh, never mind. If you're going to do it in Raleigh, I'll see you there. I will be there, Lord willing. I plan to be there. I have a ticket and all that. Okay, moving on into uh, out of the announcements phase and into the beef of what I was talking about. It is easy to find non-citizens, but there's a catch. You're not going to find non-citizens and do anything about it unless you have a badge and work for someone like this. If you're on Facebook, sorry, it's backwards. But if you're, uh, if you're on, if you watch it later at our website, voterintegrityproject.com, you will see what I'm talking about. The, um, uh, it takes a badge to do what I'm talking about, or it takes a change in the law. So our legislature is working on a change in the law that Cooper will veto because he, a similar law he vetoed, or a similar bill he vetoed two years ago. And then two years earlier than that, Phil Berger killed it, or Tim Moore, I'm not sure which. And two years before that, Berger or Moore killed it. And two years before that, Berger or Moore killed it. So we've put this bill up for since 2013, every two years. And uh, I say we, Representative George Cleveland is the, is the, he's the brains of the operation. Uh, I think Jethro Gibbs, actually he's a hardworking, uh, retired gunny sergeant from the Marines. He's, he's one, uh, I just can't speak highly enough of him. He is, uh, yeah, I guess I worded that right. But anyway, um, yes, we like him a lot and uh, can't, I can't advertise for him. He is running for uh, probably, he probably have a primary challenger. He's in the Onslow area, but he's a true patriot. We love him. And uh, he's uh, the best friend election integrity has in the legislature. He also shows up on uh, the 2A on their list of good friends, the Second Amendment people. They love him too. So just saying, uh, Cleveland's a real deal. He's been pushing this bill since we first proposed it to him in 2013 as a way to solve the problem, one of the problems. I mean, there are non-citizens on North Carolina voter roll. Hold on. Sorry about the noise there over Facebook. <clears throat> there are non-citizens on the voter roll and I went over it on Wednesday in a very lengthy podcast about how we know this to be true. And I'm gonna to touch on it today and not quite be as emotional, if you will. We'll keep it shorter. The deal is people are going in to the uh, DMV, people who are not citizens. You have two kinds. You have the honest kind, and you have the lion, sneaky kind who are going to go for it. They're going to come in and steal. Um, they're going to steal a place in America as a, and by masquerading as a citizen. And these people, 
They don't tell the DMV that they're not citizens. Instead, they bring fake paperwork to convince the DMV that they are citizens. These are our problem. Now, how many of them are there? There's a lot. Uh, we know because of some work we've done in the past, we know that there's a lot. Uh, the statist approach is to, is to look for the ones who identify themselves to DMV as being a non-citizen. So these are the ones who just go in and they bring their foreign passport and they bring their green card or not even a green card. Maybe they bring a, a temporary visa. They say, hey, I'm here in America. I'm working over at SAS, for example. Um, I'll be here for three years. Then I'm going back to wherever, India, England, Sweden, wherever. Um, can I get a driver's license? And DMV looks at the paperwork, says yes. And they issue them what they call an LP license, which is a legal presence. And it's, it's, it's a fine license. Uh, and then some bonehead at DMV registers that person to vote anyway. That's a problem. Now, that's one kind of non-citizen on the roll. Now, law enforcement, that's the kind they focus on. They focus on those to see if they voted later, and they come after them. That We have seen that happen. And Bobby Higdon did it uh, in 2016 at a high profile. He was the U.S. attorney for the Raleigh area, and he worked with uh, the, the son of Mark Martin, believe it or not, the uh, Supreme Court Justice, who was the U.S. attorney for the Middle District. In, out of Durham, Greensboro area. And uh, they work together uh, to uh, prosecute 19 of these people that they had found who had gone to DMV. They were not citizens, and uh, but they voted anyway. They, for some reason, they decided they were going to vote, and they did. They started voting, and uh, some of them, I, I went, I, I reviewed the transcripts very carefully of one of them, and it was just a very sympathetic person who, it was just a mistake. He thought he was a citizen and he didn't realize he wasn't. So he voted and they slapped him on the wrist, which is all I would have wanted to do. I mean, you know, come on, the guy made a mistake and it was a, I don't think it was malicious, basically. In federal law, they don't care if it's malicious. If you did the mistake, they can throw the book at you. But this guy was a foreigner and, you know, it was just the Trump administration, as brave as they were, were not going to beat up on some guy who thought and convinced the court i think we all knew that he was not he was not doing it maliciously so they hit him with a misdemeanor and a 200 dollars fine and said go away kid you bother me uh, and now he's a citizen now uh, but if the people we want are the people who go into dmv and they hand in some fake paperwork there's a bunch of them because uh, for the longest time north carolina did not even require any documentation and they finally started requiring it and there's a whole lot of non-citizens on our voter rolls as a result of that because dmv these people walk in, they go, do you want to register to vote also? And they go, no, no, no. They go, oh, you don't? And then DMV will freak out if you don't. So some nice person with a high school degree and a badge will shove a piece of paper over and say, since you're not registering to vote, I need you to sign this piece of paper saying I do not want to register to vote. That scares them. So they go, um, let me just go ahead and register to vote. Okay. And they register to vote. And so the DMV is happy because their paperwork looks right. And the left is happy because they've litigated DMVs across the country to where that's their knee-jerk reaction to all of this is to go ahead and force people to register unless they give them a good reason they're not, like admitting they're they're illegally entering the country and trying to with fraudulent paperwork to um, to get a normal license so they can begin their American dream. So it's kind of a conundrum. The left has figured out, of course, we're the ones who are slow to it. But we stumbled across it. Voter Integrity Project, actually, John Pizzo and I. And uh, an unnamed programmer uh, who asked to never be named in public, so I won't do it. Um, this this programmer helped us do it, and we found uh, over 500 people on the Wake County Wake County voter rolls in a three-year period. We found 500 people who um, over 500 who had gotten out of jury duty by claiming, by telling, by convincing the clerk of courts they were not citizens, but they were on the jury list. So how did that happen? How many of them registered to vote? There were 6,000 non-citizens on our list. 6,000 people had gotten out of jury duty using that proof. 6,000 in a three-year period. We only found 500 because we weren't looking that hard and because we there was things we didn't have that the other side did have. So um, let's see. 
I got distracted by a post. Uh, so Deirdre, I'll get to you, uh, but I can't comment right now. Um, we we found them. We found a bunch and went through a big, a big kerfuffle. And uh, if you want to see how bad it went for me, even though we were right, we were proven right. The worst day of our entire existence, road integrity, was on that day. Uh, you look up my name, Jay Delancey, with one E, D E L A N C Y, and then put the words temper tantrum in quotes, and you'll see the hit piece that WREL's Laura Leslie did against us, against me in particular, and the lies that were told and all that. Bottom line is, all that was lies, and we were right. They were there, everyone knew it, that we were right, but they kept them on the rolls anyway. And just use it. we just got out lawyered and it's just it stinks, but that's okay. Uh, we learned a lot. The fact we learned is that this methodology works, and this legislator saw what we did and said he agreed it works. So he introduced a bill, and we've been fighting for that bill for eight years. This year's version is House Bill 259. This bill has the left going freaking crazy over this. And uh, so the Charlotte Observer did an opinion piece on it. And uh, I'm putting a post up today to go over it in some more detail. I talked about it Wednesday in a very lengthy podcast. Sorry about that. Um, and I'm going to stay focused on one thing I barely touched on last Wednesday. And um, just some of the arguments they use that make this so specious. And they said their, their key is illegal voting by non-citizens is not a widespread issue. That is in the third paragraph of the story. Okay, that is a lie given either out of malice or ignorance. So are they stupid or evil? The answer is yes. Um, they are lying about that. It is a widespread problem, but they don't know it or they do know it. So if they don't know it, they're just stupid. And I wouldn't put it past them, depending on who wrote this. If they do know it, then they're evil. But they're going after this bill. It's called the Election Integrity Act. Boy, it just you want to drive the left crazy, call a bill the Election Integrity Act. <laughs> and watch their heads explode. Trigger, trigger warning. It's a dog whistle. It's a dog whistle. You're just a horrible person. Okay. All right, first, uh, there's just some facts I'm going to bring up in today's post. Then I'm going to get out of here because I want to be downtown for a great man who's speaking today named Mark Keith Robinson, Lieutenant Governor of North Carolina. Yeah, I'm that kind of Christian, that kind of activist, um, that kind of bigot, you know, whatever. Anyway, you know, just whatever, just whatever you want to call it. I love, oh, he's black, by the way, so you can call me a racist if you want to. Call him a racist if you want to. WRL actually did. Okay, enough about Mark Keith. Okay, here's a fun fact. A fun, fun fact that in October, October, like two years ago, practically, it's two years ago this week, October 25th, 2018, well, it's three years ago. Now, I did go to Carolina briefly, so it affected my math genes, but I spent more time in state. So it's three years, it's not two years. Okay. Uh, fun fact is that Pat Gannon, the chief propagandist for the State Board of Elections, or as they called him at the time, spokesman, but now he's something like director of information or director of communication. They've elevated him because he's this one really good. The force, is, the force is strong with that one, so don't underestimate him. Pat, in a quote for the Wake Forest Weekly, see, they were talking about those, those um, non-citizens that, um, that were found by Higdon. They weren't talking about our jury work. They, they were talking about the ones at Higdon, the East, uh, Eastern District, U.S. District Court found, Department of Justice. I'll spit it out in a minute. And that was what the story is about. But the writer uh, contacted uh, Gannon, and Gannon stepped in, the, in a big pile of poo that uh, we're going to never let him get away with. It's still stuck on him. Um, Patrick Gannon, spokesman for the State Elections Board, said the indictments presented somewhat of a unique situation to officials. And then he, then the haymaker, he said, we do not have a regular voter list maintenance process to identify and remove non-U.S. citizens from the voter roll. Then he shifts the subject to, to shift blame on, because we don't have the right information. No, that is, it's because you don't want to find them. Okay, no, I'll cut him some slack. 
if we gave them the resources they wanted, which the federal government won't give them, it'd be a lot easier. But they do have the resources. They don't have the will. One of the resources is the public information of jury disqualification information. These non-citizens are getting out of jury duty. There are other state and local agencies and organizations that have proof of who the citizens are and who they're not. They're just not sharing that information. Uh, example, clerk of courts, a very low level office to run for. Those people hide this information from the public and from the election rolls. If we had any idea how many non-citizens are walking in there getting out of jury duty because they're non-citizens, we'd be shocked. And I learned this from Bev Long, who is really sad situation. Her husband uh, had been murdered and she was sitting in court the whole time watching the, the murder trial go through. And, uh, and then the jury part of it, she, um, uh, she was appalled as they were picking jurors to see how many of them were getting out of jury duty by, uh, by virtue of citizenship or lack thereof. And that got her wheels turning. Bev became a friend of voter integrity and in that way. And, um, anyway, we started working on it. So we worked together on some of this because Bev did great work. And, and we found non-citizens through the jury disqualification process. We found it. Non, bunch of non-governmental organizations, just a bunch of tea baggers, if you will, tea party people who shouldn't even be involved in politics. Who the heck are we? Um, you know, back in 2012, we found this and we, we got beat up badly for it. But the data stand. The state knows it. And this act would be a way for the, uh, the state board of elections that would give them some resources. They don't want those resources. So Patrick complains, oh, it's because we don't have the comprehensive citizenship database. No, it's because you don't want it. You don't want to find non-citizens. So when you have data, you won't use it. If you can get data, you won't get it. You just want to turn a blind eye because life is safer that way. And I understand. I, you know, you understand where they come from. I don't prove, but I understand. All right, let's see. Now, um, so that was one fun fact. Mind you, I'm riffing on the point that the Charlotte Observer said non-citizen voting is not a widespread problem. So the jury duty disqualification proves that it's a much bigger problem than we realize. Add to that. The state has no method of finding non-citizens on the rolls by their own admission. So where does the Charlotte Observer get off saying it's not a widespread problem when they don't know? That's okay. Stupid or evil? Yep. I'll let you decide. Okay, so moving from there, we have a post that you need to know about. Um, no, that's about it. I'm, I'm going to talk about 259 a little bit more to make sure we covered all of our bases. 259 is a good bill right now. It's stuck in rules committee and rules may or may not, um, may or may not take this up. Monday, I would say uh, maybe, but I doubt it. Um, just be, if you're, if you live in the Wake County area, please um, consider making yourself available at little to no notice to show up down at the legislature. Um, Monday sometime, Monday morning, Monday afternoon, not sure when. Okay, our story talks about, uh, our story, it's the gift that keeps giving is the name of it, but we might, uh, that might be a subtitle because finding non-citizens is easy. Okay, um, we're talking about the bill and the bill was filed originally as a little bill about election machines. It was Keith Kidwell, Kyle Hall, Jeff McNeely, and representative, uh, all of these representatives, and then George Cleveland. The four of them uh, filed the bill as co-sponsors. But then they took it into committee and popped out a PCS, which uh, if you watched us, you know what that is. You sound here in the know. You go, oh, yeah, there's a PCS on that, meaning a proposed committee substitute for the original bill. And they, they, they can gut the bill and take away everything from the old bill, just give, take the shell. They didn't do that in this case, but they added to the bill and they added the non-citizen jury duty, the whole thing I was just talking about, to put that in there to create a method to um, give the state board of elections the mechanisms they need to find these non-citizens and actually make them do it, not just give them the tools, but make them do it. And boy, that scares the heck out of the left and the Democrats and the rhinos too, unfortunately. So. This is going to be a push because a lot of rhinos don't like this bill either because they like the idea of open borders and cheap labor. So that's uh, that's our problem. But anyway, so I 
the article I referred to, uh, I said newspapers and Doom Rhino Cabal has fought the same sort of bill literally since 2013. It's, it's been tough. Uh, let's see. But the bill, uh, there's a lot of lies they're saying about it. And I went over some of those in a post on Wednesday, and I'm not going to beat that to death. I just wanted to talk to you today about this lie that they say it's, it's not widespread when they don't know. And a couple of points. First off, when the legis when the when the lawmaking, when the let me try this again, when law enforcement used the politically approved methodology, even they found some. And those are only people who followed the rules of DMV and accidentally voted, or for whatever reason they voted or someone voted for them. Who knows? But these are 19 people that were indicted in North Carolina. Now the, the Charlotte Observer is using those 19 as proof that it's not a widespread problem. But the limited, uh, think myopic, think tunnel vision approach that uh, the Department of Justice used, that would be, it's, it's a foregone conclusion. They're not going to find many of them. We actually, when that happened, we met with uh, one of Bobby Higdon's, uh, with this, the guy he delegated this, who was in charge of prosecuting this. We met with him and explained to him our jury methodology and said, hey, if you're serious about finding non-citizens, quit bugging DMV, just go to them later because DMV can't help. And if I had a if you gave me a stinking badge and gave me the resources, I would, uh, we would show you how to do it, but I'm not, I'm not going to tell you how to do it because you could be a bad guy. So uh, we, we told them how to do it. I went to <laughs> excruciating detail and they can find these people and there's a bunch of them out there. How many? We don't know. One study said probably uh, more than enough to upset the 14,000 margin that Obama won in 2008 in North Carolina. They said that, that study estimated probably around 23,000 in North Carolina alone, but it's a problem nationwide of non-citizens for whatever reason, voting, or someone voting for them, or, uh, well, that's about it, non-citizen voting. All right. Um, okay. Uh, Florida has known about this kind of problem for a while. Florida, they have the same kind of laws, the same kind of sunshine laws. It's just part of the Florida sunshine laws that you get out of jury duty you are, um, you're getting out of jury duty is public record. And then some enterprising TV journalists went and found some people who did that and were voting on a regular basis and they embarrassed them. In fact, we saw one of those stories and that's where we got the idea to do it. Only then did we meet Beverly who was talking about the very same problem from the jury side. We, a TV station in Florida, figured it out and tied it to voting and did great work. And it, Hey, we could do that too. We did, and it worked until it didn't, because the state, once they figured out what we were doing, they wouldn't let us have the data anymore. Hmm. In other words, they covered their tracks. They, we embarrassed them. Instead of fixing their procedure, they just made it where we couldn't get the information. So that's why we push for this to be public, so we can give give them some oversight. And that's a that's a big deal. That secrecy veil is a big deal about that. Um, let's see. And one other point, and then we'll get out of here. So the Florida media reports, and then a um, in Virginia, believe it or not, there's another uh, deal is that a lot of these non-citizens who followed the rules, but were registered, or maybe they didn't follow the rules, but at any rate, they're now at a, at a position where they're applying for U.S. citizenship. And you can't be registered to vote as a foreign, as a non-citizen and expect for the U.S. government to grant you citizenship. So this is how we've caught some in North Carolina, not enough, but how we've caught some. Uh, they walked in to remove themselves from the voter rolls because they're applying for their citizenship. And we know there are some that do that. We don't know how many. In Virginia, uh, Christian Adams, our attorney at the national level, got really lucky during a uh, lawsuit he got, uh, they were doing some work. I think it was a lawsuit going on in Virginia in one county. And they saw a document that suggested it was just a few pages of a bigger document. And the few pages were the list of non citizens in that county, or maybe it was that city, in that jurisdiction, who had um, requested to be removed from the voter rolls on the basis of citizenship. That was a big number. So, Christian, uh, he, he fought Virginia to get the document that showed the whole document, not just the, those few pages that he had, but the whole document. 
and it wound up to be 5,556 people who had gotten out of, who had asked to get their names removed from the voter rolls because they were self-confessing. I am not a citizen. Take me off your voter rolls. Okay. And they took them off and they kept a record of it because it is a record. And the state board of North Carolina has that. And Christian right now is in litigation in North Carolina over this because Josh Stein fought hard. Christian wanted to get the same information here that wouldn't give it to him. And then uh, he tried, uh, he got, they found a, the, the left got lucky and they got a bad judge and the judge said, no, you can't have it. And Christian's organization, Public Interest Legal Foundation, actually appealed it and they won at the appellate court level. And I talked to, uh, when I talked to Logan from PILF, the organization, last night, and Logan said that um, it was remanded back to the district court and they're going to actually, uh, the, the district court will decide what information Christian needs and what, what he can have and what he can't have because it's, uh, it involves DMV information and that gives them a big veil to hide behind because of the law about driver privacy. And privacy is a big trick the left plays to keep you from knowing what your government's doing. And that's where it circles back into this jury deal as you're trying to keep that private too. So you won't know. So you won't. They could be doing nothing or they could be doing everything and you won't know. That's what they want. They want secrecy. Uh, okay, so Christian found a whole 5,500 5, of them in Virginia. I don't know if the Charlotte Observer would consider that to be a big number but or widespread, but they're saying this is not a widespread problem. <laughs> right, okay. Um, and then the, uh, let's see, Pat Gannon's admission that they have no regular list maintenance process to identify and remove non-U.S. citizens. It is a widespread problem. We just don't know how widespread. So we're headed toward a great reckoning in this whole area. And the key is we have to fully expose what election officials are doing in the name of privacy. They're upset. Never forget that if you take privacy and you flip it, the secrecy. So they're selling you, they want secrecy and they're fooling you or scaring you into it. After all, you don't want to be doxxed, do you? You don't want people to know who you are. So, uh, the, the deal, I'm sorry, I just read Paige's quote, and I like it. She said, your comment about jury duty is really a strong clue. It is, and y'all should pay attention. Go to court and watch. Just go on jury selection day in your town and watch. A lot of people get out of jury duty that way. This is a problem. Our boards of elect, our rogue board of elections in North Carolina, even probably in your county, I would, I would rate it higher than 70-30 that your county is rogue also. Nah, I'm, I'm being generous. Maybe 90-10, it's rogue. Um, but it's hard to prove. It's like proving how much insurance fraud there is out there. It's just really hard to prove. But they need more accountability. This is what this audit 2020 movement is all about. If, you, if I've gotten your attention to want to get involved in this, you could always throw us a, a few throw us a few bucks on our website, like voterintegrityproject.com, but that's not what this is about. I could, sure, I could use your donation, but we're just people doing the job. None of us get paid yet. Maybe one day we will, but nah. uh, we're too busy working to go out and do the real grifting like some of them do, the real fundraising. Uh, but anyway, you know, like five bucks a month, great, but that's not my point. Go pull your sleeves up and get to work. And what would that be is um, go to audit force, Demand. I got four steps. Um, call your legislature and say, hey, audit 2020, audit those elections. I'll argue with you. Just tell them anyway. Said, no, 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 you need to do it. And if you if you really want to get smart before you do it, check out our website, um, do some research, look at our website, voterintegrityproject.com, and you'll see a lot of good arguments to use against them when they start going, oh, we can't do that. Give you all kinds of excuses. That's all they are. No, they must do it. They must, too. They have the legal authority to do it. It's called the Constitution. That's well within their rights to do it. It will be a fight because they've given away that power. It's theirs. They delegated it. Now they have to claw it back, and they don't want to do that. So it's uh, because it's unpleasant. You know, these are all ambitious politicians. But if you make them, they will do it. All right. Number one, bug your legislature. Number two, contact NC Audit Force and say, hey, I want to help. I want to help. Now, if you don't want to go knock on doors, then volunteer to be a driver. 
a volunteer to be a data hound. They need, I'm told they need all three of those. So contact, it's a telegram channel in North Carolina audit force. I have a link to it on our, on this story for this page, today's podcast. If there's a link, I'll have a link to it. Um, let's see. And then, uh, let's see. Okay. Number three is uh, pull up your sleeves, uh, contact your local board of elections. Be very innocently say, had like a job. Can I have a job, please? Can I, can I work for you? Because their turnover there is pretty high and they need people who will work at the polls to do the work. And it's a paid gig in North Carolina. Uh, I don't know what state you're in, but in North Carolina, it's a paid gig. They call them volunteers, but they pay them. Excuse me. And this is a problem because they've raised the pay such that it may be harder and harder to get those jobs because people are going to want them. And the problem when they pay too much is that the people who have those jobs fall in love with the money more than they do with right or wrong. There's a proverb about that. Proverbs 23.1 says, if you find yourself in love with the, with the food on the king's table, put a knife to your throat. So these employees, if they're willing to compromise our elections um, because they're getting paid and they don't want to lose their job, those people need to be out. So the only way they're going to be out is if they're caught. And there's two ways to catch them. And that's the fourth thing you can do. Two ways to catch them. The easiest is to be there as an employee so they won't do it because there's too many good guys around. They just won't cheat. That's that's the best way. Plus, you get paid. Uh, but the drawback is you got to work uh, about a 14-hour day on Election Day. That's a long day. Some of you are older and don't want to do that. It's like, I don't want to do that. they pay you, but you know, not enough. It comes down to, what, 10 bucks an hour maybe. Um well, let's see. So get a job. And if you don't want to get a job, then go to the fourth thing, which is uh, harass your local party to let them make you an election observer. Now, spoiler alert, the Republican Party and the Democrat Party do not want observers. They would rather convert you to do something like uh, hand out flyers for your candidate out in front of the place. We call those greeters. Now, greeters are an important person. That's an important role. But I don't recruit greeters. I report. I recruit observers. So that's where I need you think in terms of observers. We will have a 2022 boot camp that will go into observing and it'll be observing. It'll be a weaponized version of observing, metaphorically speaking. There will, there will be no guns, no knives, no Trump flagpoles, none of that, no bear spray, none of that at the polls. But you will be a dangerous observer and the left knows it. They're trying to get rid of observers. Go ahead and sign up for that. Do it quickly. Contact your party right now. Say, can I observe for the uh, the primary or whatever this election is here in a couple of days? Contact the candidates. Ask them. We need observers. The more the more you learn, the smarter you are. Those are the four things you can do if you want to do something besides sit here and watch videos all day. Yeah, uh, we need people who get up, pull up their sleeves, and take action. Or this republic is lost. You have to do more than just hit the thumbs up button. You got to pull your sleeves up and do something you've never done before. Step outside your comfort zone. Otherwise, uh, other people are not going to do this for you because those other people are not there. They need help. And this is why we're so happy for the audit force and for NC First Audit uh, and for the whole Mike Lindell movement, Seth Keschel, uh, Professor Clements, um, Doug Frank, and the two people tonight, Lady Draza and uh, Joel, oh gosh, Joel, I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name here already, Joel uh, Altman, yes, yes, on our website, you'll see it, Joe, Joe Altman and Lady Draza Smith, they're both on tonight uh, in Raleigh and a uh, sold out event, and they're also at the Crystal, uh, Crystal Coast Civic Center in Moorhead tomorrow night. So if you want to go see these people, see what they're saying, the answer, the anecdote to what they're saying is to go prove it by getting evidence. They have great arguments and great things that make you sick and make you disgusting and make you angry. But turn that anger into something positive. Don't just send money to me or to them or anybody else. Pull up your sleeves and put on your walking shoes. There's work to be done. We need people to do the work. So go canvas. Canvas, canvas. Much more on that later. So for now, that's all we got. And I'm going to go downtown and go see Mark Keith Robinson blow up the left and make them so crazy they won't know what to do.
Uh, so hopefully I'll see you there. If not, uh, oh well. All right, now at that, I'm going to kill the screen share.